What's up, guys? Bang, bang. It is lunch money time. Well, while she's trying to get rich, the rest of us is trying to get our lunch money right. I don't know what Polina is doing. Who cares? I've had a lot of coffee, so I'm ready to do rock and roll. Don't forget that BlockFi is now the sponsor of lunch money. That means that you can go to blockfi.com slash pump. Very simple. If you have very smart brains, you go to blockfi.com slash pump. You sign up for an account. You deposit value into it, and then you can earn up to 8.6% APY in an interest bearing account, or you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies on their crypto exchange, or you can leave crypto there and take a US dollar loan against your crypto collateral, or you can sign up for the waitlist for their Bitcoin rewards credit card. Again, but you have to have big, big brain stuff here. Go to blockfi.com slash pomp to be able to do all that stuff. Let's get into it. Oh, I was like, what is behind my head? But that's just on the camera. Okay, um, so Coinbase. That's what I want you to think. Coinbase made a rousing debut on Wall Street Wednesday with shares of the digital currency exchange rising as high as four hundred twenty-nine dollars, briefly giving it a market value over a hundred billion. My partner is not paying attention, and he will get in trouble soon. Over what, what, what do you believe? Billion. What do you believe is the value I, here? I believe that that's great for Coinbase. That's very interesting. Only the market will tell. Let's see how it performs now that it's a public company and accountable to public shareholders. They have to be more transparent. He has, Brian Armstrong has to be more. Yes, he does. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. Listen, Coinbase isn't even a $100 billion company. It traded up over 100, but it settled. It ended up being an $88 billion okay. market cap company. Uh, but I think it is actually undervalued there. We'll see if you're telling me that they're going to do on an how annualized basis $8 billion in revenue and it's only trading at about eight or I'm sorry 10 to 11 times annualized revenue uh, newsflash have you seen the market they should be trading at like 25 times uh, according to uh, everyone else's uh, multiple so we'll see what happens but I think that yesterday actually uh, was a little bit um, confusing uh, it, it's not what I think a lot of people expected Why? but what that does mean is that the direct listing process actually probably worked Usually what you see is with an IPO, they go and they price the IPO and there's this massive pop. What that usually means is that- And you uh, want the pop as a- No. Well- No, if you're the company, you do not want the pop because- But that means, it looks good. It means Although that you left you a lot of money on the, the table. table. I know that. But the investors who are buying the IPO, of course they, they want the pop. It. And so I think that what we're gonna end up seeing here is that more and more companies are gonna realize that a direct listing is a better mechanism to actually go public. Well, and therefore there will be more choosing this path. Direct listings were kind of all the hype in 2019. And then people were like, oh, is this gonna work? I think Spotify was the first to do it. People were like, oh, is this gonna work? And then we've seen more and more companies do it. Slack did it, who else did it? Um, Airbnb. Coinbase. Is Airbnb, yeah, Airbnb did it. Um, I don't remember what Airbnb yeah, did. But anyway, so it's showing that it's gaining traction and now it's not as exotic as it seemed two years ago. Next. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink is saying that a host of factors are likely to propel markets higher in the near term, even as the S&P 500 and the Dow hover near record level levels. He said, I believe because of monetary stimulus, fiscal stimulus, the cash on the sidelines, the earnings, the markets are okay. Markets are going to continue to be stronger. He has he is very bullish on the stock market. I wrote about Larry Fink this morning in the uh, newsletter, but I'm not going to talk about the same thing because that was on his crypto comments. This is speaking about his stock market comments. I think that Larry Fink is incredibly smart. They've built an amazing business at BlackRock. I tend to agree with him on being bullish about the stock market, but it's less about those companies are gonna do some amazing thing that's gonna two or three X the value of them. And it's much, much more about the fact that uh, we simply are gonna continue to see intervention in markets by governments and central banks. They're gonna continue to manipulate interest rates down. I saw recently that uh, people are estimating that the Federal Reserve is not gonna raise rates till 2024, <laughs> which is nuts. And we're also going to continue to see more and more stimulus, monetary and fiscal policy uh, manipulating these markets. And so in a world where literally trillion dollars is no longer a big number, you're just going to see liquidity sloshing around and things like the stock market uh, as an asset class are going to do very, very well. And then people holding cash are going to get punished. And so being bullish on stocks right now, I think is actually a pretty smart uh, way to look at it. Again, there's concerns around inflation and many other uh, kind of negative side effects. But if you look at it just from a macro market structure, uh, there's a very good chance that the stock market continues for quite a while because they are just going to manipulate it that way. 
Charles Schwab added a record 3.2 million new clients in the first quarter of 2021, more new accounts than all of 2020. Schwab said it now operates nearly 32 million brokerage accounts and has about 7.07 trillion in client assets. The CEO said elevated interest in technology and other growth oriented stocks, as well as heightened market attention to certain names via social media, significantly bolstered trading activity. How much of this is because of GameStop? <laughs> Well, I, I, it's probably not GameStop as much as just overall people were sitting at home and they were trying to figure out what to do. There was no sports on, right? So but they that just, was 2020. This is the first quarter of 2021. Yeah, but what ends up happening is because asset prices are, are rising so quickly, uh, more and more people keep coming into, uh, into the market. The other thing you have to remember too is they just spent nine months sitting at home saving a lot of money. So how many people got rid of their apartment and like moved back home? We know tons of people who did that. How many people moved out of New York City to a lower cost uh, place? How many people left San Francisco and LA? Uh, how many people used to commute and now actually have that cash that they don't need? How many people used to go out every night and spend money at restaurants and now they weren't, right? So there's just a lot more personal savings rate and, and personal income all went up and the government was handing out money like it was candy, so they have that money as well. And so when you have all that cash sitting there, I think people naturally say, well, what do I do with it? There's only so much you can consume. And so naturally people say, well, maybe I should be investing some of this. Maybe I should be putting in a retirement account, paying off my debt, buying stocks. And that's where I think you're seeing more and more interest in, uh, in a lot of good. these uh, assets. What's interesting is Coinbase did more revenue in Q1 than all of 2020. Huh. Uh, Charles Schwab signed up more customers in Q1 than all of 2020. So it may not be so much kind of a, a vertical or a secular uh, trend as much as just overall financial markets are seeing an absolute boom in business. Walmart is investing in Cruise, the self-driving uh, company that's majority owned by GM as part of a new $2.75 billion funding round for the company. The decision to invest comes about five months after the company started working on a pilot program to use Cruise self-driving vehicles to, for deliveries in Scottsdale, Arizona. Cruise is now valued at $2 billion. Wow. What? Sorry, $2.75 billion. What, so Walmart? No. What? No, it is. Yep. No, $2.75 billion oh, going around. into the company. Oh, shoot. So then it's not valued at $2 billion. Just for the record, I said, Wait. no, she said that she was right, but she was on, wrong. But no, the article is wrong. How do you, how do you say? Because it, they, they mean in January it was valued at $2 billion, but it can't be valued at $2 billion still. No, the investment round size is now $2.75. Oh, it, oh, it was $2 billion I, in the I beginning. I thought they were talking about the valuation of the company. This is oh, why we're a great team. No, it's not. See, together we'll is, find the this truth. Is written the truth can't statement. hide from us. Together we'll find this it. This is written in a misleading manner. Um, it kind of is why, actually. Why is Walmart? But I was still right. Why is Walmart interested in self-driving vehicles? Will they use it for anything but deliveries? Uh, well, they're probably going to use it for a lot of different stuff. So deliveries is kind of the. Uh, from Walmart directly to the customer. But imagine all of the supply chain logistics. How many times do you drive? One time we were driving uh, along the East Coast and we started counting how many Amazon trucks yeah. we passed. Walmart's the same thing, right? And so these big 18 wheelers, if you can get all sorts of autonomous driving there, now all of a sudden you can go 24 seven, you don't need to be paying people, all that kind of stuff. Cruise's valuation is 30 billion. <laughs> it is not two, I told you. Okay, go on. Go on. I don't think she said that. We'll have to rewind the tape, no problem. Uh, but I think that on top of that, you're gonna see aut autonomous vehicles go from everything from the 18 wheelers to eventually you're gonna see it all the way down to like robots in the actual warehouses, et cetera, right? And so what you're gonna continue to see is um, these large companies, these large retailers, pursue technology to get more automation, more efficiency, and more accuracy as well. Like one of the things that's kind of an underrated feature is if you really think about it, when's the last time you ordered something from an Amazon or a Walmart and you got the wrong thing? Like you used, that used to happen like actually pretty it often. It happen often. Now that doesn't really happen that often. It still happens every once in a while. But for the most part, like when you order something, you get what you ordered. And there's technology behind that. There's logistics behind that. Like there's a bunch of things that they've been improving over time. Yeah. So if you zoom out and you look over the last 20 years, the accuracy of these services has drastically improved. The time to delivery has drastically improved. And also their unit economics have improved. So they're able to deliver this stuff at a cheaper cost because their ends still make the same or more money on it. 
that's just all technology. And so I think that they're going to continue to pursue technology to see how can they take that idea and put it on steroids. You're very good at analysis. Yeah, of course. Well, that's what I do for a living. So go ahead. Actually, what I do for a living is I screw around on the internet, but this, that's a little Guys, thing. wait, let me just complain to them. I've been locked out of my Twitter account for three days. Nobody at Twitter is helping me. Zero people are helping me. I can't get back in. So apparently, it was compromised. It was, I don't know how. I don't know why. But now I can't get into my own account. So that is why I have not been tweeting. I've been living out in the real world, non-virtual world. Okay. Your buddy, Jim Cramer, is saying that he used... Bitcoin, he, ca he sold Bitcoin, he, which he calls phony money, to pay for real money, and he paid off his home mortgage. Yeah. Jim, <laughs> I love you, man. Come on. First rule of Bitcoin. No. He said, nah, I now own a house, lock, stock, and barrel, because I bought this currency. Can we say, is it possible for me to say that I bought Jim Cramer a house? <laughs> <laughs> He, he used the profits from his investment in Bitcoin. So what do we think about... Wow, my face is shiny as hell today. So what do we think about Jim buying or selling, selling Bitcoin to purchase a home? Whereas you wouldn't even consider purchasing a couch. No. Listen, Jim, he had the courage and conviction. He bought when I told him to. He bought when it was 12000 It is now sixty four. 64,000. I think that he's going to regret math. doing this, but you know what? He owns a house, man. He owns a house. The man owns a freaking house. That's what he wants to do. If he's happy, I'm happy for him. Congratulations, Jim. I'm glad that it worked <laughs> out for you. Just it, don't sell the and rest. Who knows, who knows how much he bought? Who knows how much he sold? Well, I, I actually know exactly. Okay, don't tell us. Or if you want to tell us. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, it's Ask Lunch Money Jimmy time. Chill. That's my favorite. Hash, Jimmy Chill. Hashtag Ask LM in the comments below. Uh, from Vibov, he says, uh, when do you think BTC bull run can end? When do you think? Never. I have, a, I, I have, I have a saying that says it's going to go up. Don't worry. It yeah, she does tell me that sometimes. <laughs> you know, when it drops like 3%, I'm like, Ugh. no, just kidding. Um, the bull run, it's going to continue exactly how it always happens. Supply shock. Repricing of the asset, gets overheated, corrects, supply shock, repricing, gets overheated, corrects, supply the, shock. The general direction is probably. Yes. If you zoom out, it's all about what, what's your time frame. So if you've got a long t uh, time horizon, then, uh, you know, it's headed in the same direction. But if you want to buy a house, buy the house. Moist. Day, day 97 of commenting. I waited until just before bedtime to comment to see if I got, if I'd get an email. Alas, tomorrow could be the day. I'm getting a tire change tomorrow. Wish I could have known about uh, Pomp Boys Motors before I made the appointment. LOL. Hashtag Moist Gang. Hashtag Built Different. What do you want to say? People are commenting saying, Anthony, be a man of your word. Email Moist. What is going For on? For the record, this hasn't been 90 days. <laughs> For the record. Okay. But Even though know, Moist is saying okay, day 97 but here. we said... I know. All right. I'm going to send the email. Moist, to be honest, I was at dinner last night and I thought to myself I should email Moist. And then I went and I didn't have your email on hand. We went to dinner she with TikTok stars Josh Richards and Griffin Johnson. And my friend Michael Gruen. Oh, and Michael Gruen. And uh, who else was there? Uh, a Mark lot of Roberts. People. Yeah, a lot, lot of great people. Had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I learned a lot, a lot about of TikTok. fun. I had a lot of fun. It was the most fun. It was so much fun. I oh, don't ever need to have fun okay. ever again. All right. <laughs> That's it for today, guys. Have a great Thursday. Thursday. Bang, bang. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Lunch Money as much as we did. And don't forget, Lunch Money is now sponsored by BlockFi. So go check them out. There's a link in the description that you can click on. I'm an investor, a user, and a huge fan. What? You're a bigger fan of BlockFi than you are of me? BlockFi is my second favorite thing in the world behind Polina. <laughs> They've got three products. <laughs> they can give you a U.S. dollar loan. You can earn up to 8.6% interest on an interest-bearing account. Or you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies on their crypto exchange. I personally use the interest-bearing account. There's not very many places where you'll find up to 8.6% interest on a deposit in an interest-bearing account. Go do your own research. There's risk associated, but 8.6% is pretty compelling. So click on the link in the description. Say thanks to the folks at BlockFi. Subscribe to our channel. Like the video. Annoy Polina in the comments. 
and we'll see you guys tomorrow. And be kind to your friends.